I drew a heart on a sticky for my wife a long time ago, stuck it on the bathroom mirror, and something that was never supposed to become a permanent fixture in our bathroom has become just that. This Valentine's Day, I'm going to rectify that with something a bit more permanent and worthy. I'm going to carve out a wooden valentine for my wife. Rather than starting in CAD, I'm going to draw it by hand to be a bit more personable, uh, and then we'll carve it out in wood. The wood I plan on using will be square, so keeping that in mind, I'm going to first sketch out the valentine in pencil, and then go over it in black marker before we move over to the computer. Now we scan it in. Using my favorite editing program, I'm going to clean up the scan. First I'll rotate and crop, then using the magic wand tool, clean up the white areas uh, to, to eliminate any of these extra marks you can see in the scan right now. Then finally I'll convert it to black and white to make the black lines as black as possible and save it as a PNG. Not only will I be doing that with the main graphic, but I'll also do it with the date as well that I'll be carving into the back of the valentine. Next I'm using a PNG to SVG converter. I googled for a converter and this was one of the first that came up so there's no real preference here. Uh, we will load in our file uh, using the colors and simplify boxes. We'll clean it up and a little bit more and then generate our SVG file for our CAM software. Here we are in our CAM software, ESTL CAM. First, we're going to check our settings to make sure we're using our Gerbil machine, which we are. Then we're going to check our bit. So we are using a V-bit with a 30 degree tip angle and the bottom of our tip has a 0.3 millimeter flat piece. So I've programmed this bit in, everything looks good. So we'll hit OK and now we'll load in our SVG file. We're going to set a width of 95 millimeters. Our stock, our wood stock, is 125 millimeters square. So this gives a 15 millimeter border all the way around that won't have any uh, carving in it. So here's our graphic. Using the whole and part tool, we will uh, carve out all our lines. Um, it is a differential process, so with two boundaries. First by setting the hole and then by setting the part, then going back to the hole and indicating that we are using the island function. Uh, with letters with no holes, it is simply a hole um, function. All our tool paths have been set, so we'll check this in the preview. Uh, we want to carve our depth to three millimeters, and we'll now take a look at the preview. We'll zoom in a bit. You'll notice a lot of tool paths here because our bit is only 0.3 millimeters wide on the bottom. So to carve out these pockets, it does have to make a lot of passes. The one benefit of using the V-bit is that our sides will be tapered, which should give us a bit of a softer, smoother profile, and it should be a little bit easier for finishing. 
we'll zoom back out, we'll tilt it, and you can see we are making two passes at 1.5 millimeters depth to give us the full three millimeter depth uh, for our carving. So we'll hit OK, everything looks good. Now we'll export our G-code. Again, we have to set the depth because we didn't set it when we were um, doing the original holes and parts. And now time to go to the garage. Here's our wood stock. It is from a reclaimed pallet, and you can find out how I reclaimed it in a previous video I did, which I'll link below. As it is 125 millimeters tall, we will measure and cut it off at 125 millimeters wide with a chop saw. I've measured in a spot that's 15 millimeters and 15 millimeters in from the corner, which is our zero point. Uh, this leaves the 15 mil border all the way around. So we're going to move our bit into place. We have measured and set our zero point Keeping in mind our 15 millimeter border, we'll just use a piece of paper and we just barely get under there. So our Z height is also set well. All that's left to do is to run our jaw. Had some issues carving out my design. This is partially because of the bit I'm using. I'm using a V-bit, so let's take a, a second to draw it out to understand. Um, my V-bit, it's an eighth inch bit with a 30 degree point on it. So this here is 30 degrees. This is an eighth of an inch. And the bottom here is 0.3 of a millimeter. So it does have a flat spot on it. So when I'm carving my tool paths, so if we use this as the stock and my tool path goes like that, I'm treating my V-bit as essentially a 0.3 millimeter end mill. So if in, in the defined tool paths, uh, 0.3 would be something like about that wide. But because it's a V-bit, we're actually carving out this material here as well. So we are taking a bit of extra material in addition to what we want to take. So as a result, my tool paths are ending up a bit wider um, than the original uh, sketch or tool path. 
So let's go over the three different attempts here and see what happened. Uh, this was my first attempt. I went um, two passes at 1.5 millimeters. We've lost a lot of detail in the letters. Uh, some of the spaces between the letters started breaking out. We've lost the middles. The M is particularly mushy. Um, but the depth gave a nice defined profile and it looks pretty sharp. Uh, it was also easy to paint. Um, this one, I only went one and a half millimeters deep. Um, the letters were a lot better, a lot more defined. Uh, a lot of the details stayed, uh, but it was harder to paint. Um, and when I got into some of the finishing, I actually, uh, these letters are almost sanded right out and I've lost that, that depth or that, that look. Um, so it kind of takes away from what we were trying to do with the carving to begin with. Uh, this is the third attempt. I, this is a single three millimeter pass. Uh, it was probably at the limits of the machine. So if you're using a stock machine, you may want to consider scaling that back a bit. I was starting to get a bit of chatter when it started on each new tool path. So essentially each new carve, uh, I'd get a bit of chatter until the bit got into the groove and it got working along. Um, I did clean this up before I exported the G-code. Uh, so the, the space between the G's is, is actually there this time. The M's a little more defined. Uh, the center of this E is actually still here. Um, and so this one turned out pretty good. We're, so we're going to move ahead with finishing this one. This is actually straight off the CNC. You can see we actually have very clean edges compared to when uh, I used a, an end mill in my previous project, which I'll link below. But uh, when I used an end mill or end mill, I was getting a lot of extra coming off on these edges that required um, sanding and filing. So this is super clean. Uh, we're going to move forward with just a really light sanding. We will paint in our black stain um, to give all our letters and, and outline a nice look like I've done here. Then we'll give it a really quick sand after it's set to um, take off any of this, this extra that kind of gets out of the letters. Uh, put a red stain over everything else and then a couple clear coats. It's had an hour to dry. We're going to give it a light sanding to take off the excess or this little bit of over application in spots. And then we're going to apply the red stain. Another hour later and we're ready for clear coat. Uh, the weighting between the coats is important. Uh, if you don't weight enough, particularly with the black, stain to set, it does smear when you put on the layers on top. So it is important to wait that drying time and make sure there's no wet spots. Uh, with that, let's put on our first clear coat and then uh, again, give it another hour to set. It's been a couple hours as the clear coat does take a little bit more time than the stain to dry. Uh, it's looking pretty good. It's still a little tacky in a couple spots, uh, but close enough that we can put on the second coat of clear. Here we are a couple hours later and the paint's almost dry. It's a little tacky in spots, so we're going to have to give it the night to finish drying. It turned out really well, actually. We did have a bit of run of the black in the wood grain. Uh, but nothing significant. Um, if I was to do it again, I would probably use a finer tip marker and use a 60 degree V-bit instead of a 30 degree like I used. I think that would still get you the line width. It would still be fairly easy to paint, but it should preserve a little more detail in the letters, particularly where we have these um, thin walls or close together letters in the wood. My stock was 125 millimeters by 125 millimeters. I definitely wouldn't want to go any smaller. I think that would be uh, hard to do. 
and still keep it legible. Uh, it would scale up pretty good though. Once the paint's dry, it should be ready to go in the mirror for my lovely wife. A little bit of two-sided tape. And it's out with the old. And in with the new. Get it nice and level. Get that two-sided tape sticking. And there we go. Happy Valentine's Day, hon. <laughs>